tonight on DC News Now. A shooting inside a Maryland gym capping off a violent week in Prince George's County. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel safe. I don't know how I'm, I'm, if I'm coming, I'm going to come back. Gym goers worried about returning with the shooter still on the loose. Buyer beware. Two people accused of dropping fake card readers at stores around the district, taking your personal data. How to spot the fake devices. Hi, everyone. Let's head into the weekend with some warmer temperatures. We'll look at your seven day forecast coming up. Public transportation is essential for our city. I think it would affect a lot of people. DC circulator bus system on the chopping block as the city looks at ways to save money. Tonight, riders react to the potential cuts. Shopping experience that won't cost you a dime and yet could make the night of a lifetime. This story from a Fairfax County High School coming up. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight for DC News Now at 9 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan. All right, we made it to Friday, the weekend just about here, taking a live look right now at the White House. Clear skies ahead and what's shaping up the pretty nice weekend. We can see here the flags blowing atop of the White House there. Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb in and uh, Janessa. All right, we made it to the weekend just about. It's going to be a windy and a warm weekend. Yeah, you have a kind of the best of a kind of one world that's not so great. And the other one, we're happy to see finally this warm up across uh, the region. Clear skies right now. Live look out towards the Roslyn area, but winds have been very gusty uh, throughout the entire day. Due to that storm system we dealt with last night, it is pulling outside of the region. And so at this point, all this brown color shade, it continues to creep over now into sections of Frederick, Washington, County, most of Western Maryland, and then sections of Western uh, West Virginia, south of 66 and west of I-81, uh, dealing with this wind advisory until 6 uh, p.m. tomorrow evening. Here's your current sustained winds, 15 to 20 miles per hour, but folks, I've seen gusts today up to 50 miles per hour from Luray, Woodstock, uh, stretching into the Kaiser area, 30 mile per hour wind flow out of D.C. metro area, and that extends into Anne Arundel County as well. Temperatures at the 9 o'clock hour we're still very mild out there. The difference tonight, though, we have that weak disturbance that's going to come through and it's going to keep us on the cooler side. Some of these locations that we're currently dealing with a good bout of rain from Winchester to Front Royal, uh, it is a little bit cooler and you can kind of see that contrast. Waking up tomorrow morning, you do have uh, some partial clearing, but the winds, they're very noticeable if you're headed to that parade uh, going out very early tomorrow morning. And folks, it's going to last all day long. Really don't see them subside until about 8 p.m. Chris, we do have a huge warm up though for your late weekend. We'll talk numbers coming up. OK, we'll see you then. Janessa, thanks. Developing now at nine. Prince George's County Police still looking for a suspect after a man was shot inside a popular gym last night. It happened at the L.A. Fitness in Glen Arden. That's where D.C. News Now's Daniel Hamburg joins us live at Woodmore Town Center. And Daniel, a lot of people showed up today, really had no idea what happened. Yeah, Chris, we saw car after car pull up, not realizing that the place was cold. In fact, we told them what had happened and they told us they don't feel safe here anymore. It's an unusual sight. Police surrounding a gym where people work out. I've never experienced anything that made me feel like violence was possible at this gym. JC Whittington is one of many gym members who expected to get a workout in Friday. I did not receive an email telling me that the gym was closed. If I did, I wouldn't have came. If I had an idea, I would not be here. This LA Fitness closed because of a shooting that happened Thursday night around 8.30 p.m. I'm very surprised because this is a fairly new gym and the neighborhood is not like that you don't really hear reports of shootings. Glen Arden Police Chief Regis Bryant says the shooting happened in the basketball court area after a dispute between two men. When they got here, they found a man shot several times. I don't think I'm going to be back here, man. Gym members say they're going to be more cautious now, but in the moment are shocked an argument would lead to a shooting. These days, people doesn't have patience, you know, uh, for a single moment. You can let it go, whatever it happens. In the gym, you know, testosterone gets worked up and people get, you know, but I would have never thought that a shooting would have happened in the gym. 
Now, at last check, the man who was shot is in critical condition. The suspect got away in a white vehicle. Prince George's County Police are leading this investigation now. According to, according to uh, LA Fitness's website, they will be back open at 8 a.m. tomorrow. We're live in Glen Arden. Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. Okay, Daniel, thanks for that update. Meanwhile, the shooting is one of just several across Prince George's County in a matter of days. Last night, 19-year-old Tyrone Avent was shot to death at Oxen Hill. Someone else was shot at a bowling alley in College Park. And on Wednesday, a 19-year-old was killed in a shooting in the Chillum area near McDonald's. And tonight, Prince George's County Police also asking you to be on the lookout for two men connected to the shooting death of a sanitation worker. You may remember the 30-year-old victim was shot and killed on the job in Woodlawn. A shooting happened April 4th, and police believe it was targeted. You can see here in this video, the suspects taking off in a gray Kia sedan. Police are now offering a $25,000 reward in this case. Meanwhile, developing now in the district, D.C.'s circulator bus is now on the chopping block. Mayor Muriel Bowser proposing to cut the program in her latest budget with service plan to stop by next April. Our Mario Carbone is following the story for us. She shows us live on Wisconsin Avenue in Georgetown. And Marielle, that's just one of six lines the circulator operates. Yeah, Chris, it is actually this line here. It's one of the first two original uh, circulator routes. The goal to get people downtown and near the mall area. But over the last two decades, it's expanded across the district. And while the mayor says it's worked for a while, she says at this point, uh, the ridership levels just don't justify the cost. On a Friday afternoon in Anacostia, a steady stream of circulator buses roll through. People filing on and off. I take it every day after work. Maya Monaghan Jones is one of them. Usually when I get on, it's always either somebody already on or people getting on. And she says the circulator is essential for her daily commute and for other people's too. Public transportation is essential for our city. Not a lot of people drive. And still, the circulator is on the chopping block. Mayor Muriel Bowles are proposing to cut the service in her 2025 budget proposal. The reason, a post-pandemic drop in ridership. How many people? have seen a bus, a DC circulator with one or two people on it. It's not rebounding. The ridership doesn't justify the cost. And data shows ridership steadily increasing since 2021. And but the nearly 2 million riders last year is still far below 2019, when nearly 6 million people use the service. The circulator, which operates six routes, runs every 10 minutes at just $1 a ride. Sometimes it's packed and sometimes it's a little bit less, but a lot of people use it to get around. And Daryl Wilson takes the circulator several times a month. To go grocery shopping and things like that. Um, it goes places that the Metro bus doesn't go. His opinion? Stay, yes. And so council is still working through the budget. In the meantime, the DDOT director says uh, that they are working with WMATA to see how that agency can help pick up some of these routes. Uh, that way, anybody impacted by the circulator cuts uh, still have a way to get to where they need to go. Reporting live in Georgetown tonight, I'm Marielle Carbone, DC News Now. We have new details tonight on the collapse of Baltimore's Key Bridge. Maryland lawmakers have introduced a bill that would have the federal government pay for the entire rebuilding process. The feds typically pick up about 90% of the costs while the state pays the remaining 10%. It's unclear how much a new bridge would cost, but estimates are in the billions of dollars. Meanwhile, the state launched a program today aimed at preventing layoffs while recovery work continues. Under the program, businesses or other entities impacted by the bridge collapse are eligible for up to $200,000 in grants. In the district tonight, D.C. police say card skimmers were placed at four grocery stores and a Wawa in D.C. And they're looking for two suspects they believe are behind it. D.C. News Now's Tosin Fakile joining us now with what stores were impacted and also safety tips to be aware of before swiping your card. And Tosin, some incidents are more recent than others. 
Yeah, Chris, that's absolutely right. But first, let me tell you where these skimmers were found. Police say they were found at two Harris Teeters, two Safeways and a Wawa. Some happened in March. One happened today. And so if you are at any of these stores, you want to listen up and pay attention to the locations and times where these card skip card skimmers were found. Now, police say a skimmer was found at the Safeway store on Cor Coran Street Northwest at about 10 a.m. A card skimmer was also found by a customer at the Safeway on Wisconsin Avenue. That's the Glover Park area on April 10th at about 930 p.m. Also on April 10th, investigators say a skimmer was located at the Wawa on 40th Street. That was at about 1025 p.m. We're also told skimmers were found at two different Harris Teeter stores. Investigators say someone reported they saw two white men put a skimmer, a skimmer on a self-checkout machine at the Harris Teeter in first First Street Northeast on March 22nd. That was at about 2.30 p.m. And police report says between March 21st and April 1st, someone placed an overlay keypad skimmer on a credit card machine at the Harris Teeter on M Street in Southeast. Now take a look at your screen right now. This is surveillance video and pictures of the two suspects police are looking for and need your help to identify. If you have any information, you're asked to call police. And MPD has some advice to kind of help you make sure you stay alert next time you're in the store. So take a look at your screen as well. They say make sure the device cannot be moved or budges when it's touched. Compare the machine you're using to the one next to you. Check the alignment of the card reader and the panel underneath it. And they say look inside of the card reader before inserting your card. And two more tips from DC police right now. They say if you see or suspect that a card skimmer is at the machine you're using, they're asking you to call 911 immediately. They also say notify your bank immediately if you feel your card was used used at any card skimmer. Back to you, Chris. All right, Tosin Fikile, really important information there. Thanks. Happening now, final preps well underway for tomorrow's Cherry Blossom Festival Parade in downtown D.C. So thousands of people are expected to turn out for a morning full of floats, dancing, music, and a whole lot of fun. D.C. News Now's Randy Bass brings us a sneak peek. Some of those performers are here at the University of the District of Columbia campus getting in one last rehearsal before they take the biggest stage in D.C. That's Constitution Avenue, of course. On the other side of town at the D.C. Armory, people are working hard to put finishing touches on a few fabulous floats, and we got an inside look. Painting the town pink for the parade, pasting petals, flowers, and blossoms on just about every corner of these massive floats. These floats get conceived, you know, six, seven months ago and start being built. They bring the structures here, start putting them together, and then tomorrow morning they'll take them on site and do all the final touches. Floats from Metro, Events DC, Reagan National and Dulles airports and more are getting their finishing touches before it's go time at 10 a.m. Final fixes and tweaks for dancers coming together from across the country, too. The parade caps the end of a weeks long National Cherry Blossom Festival, but the work that goes into these floats and festivities starts long before peak blue. The, the city will continue to bloom tomorrow on Constitution Avenue with beautiful floats and 15 marching bands from all around the country, as well as fabulous performers and special appearances. If you are heading out to the parade, the best way to get there, leaders say, is taking Metro, so avoiding any hassles when it comes to driving. There are a few paid tickets still available, but of course it is free to bring your family and set up along the parade route. In Van Ness, I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now. All right, it should be a lot of fun there. The Cherry Blossom Festival, though, uh, the parade isn't the only thing happening this weekend. Plenty of other outdoor events set to kick off as well. DC Beer Festival returns tomorrow at Nationals Park. It'll be the best way to refine your beer tasting palate. More than 80 breweries will be handing out samples with music and food trucks. The Japanese Street Festival also gets underway tomorrow. That is the largest celebration of Japanese culture in the entire U.S. And Sunday is DC Emancipation Day. That parade kicks off at 2 p.m. at Freedom Plaza in Northwest. A whole lot going on this weekend.